Hello, welcome to your next online lesson. Today we're going to be looking at case studies and obviously we have already looked at case studies in your year one research methods. This is just looking at things that you have already looked at but looking at it in a little bit more detail. So hopefully it'll be quite straightforward because it'll be quite fresh in your memories. So firstly, your starter. Can you explain the difference between qualitative and quantitative data? What a pilot study is? The three different types of interviews, event and time sampling, the difference between content and thematic analysis. So just pause me now and have a go at writing a short definition of each. Use your textbooks to help you if you need to. And don't just wait for the for me to tell you the answers because that's not how we're going to learn. It'll be by you actually researching and looking for the answers yourselves is how your um, memories will be consolidated. So pause me now and have a go at doing that. Okay, so I'm sure you all got the first one. Qualitative data is descriptive data and then quantitative data is numerical data that you can analyse statistically. A pilot study is a small scale study of um, a study that you later want to carry on and the purpose of a pilot study is to investigate the feasibility of it, the cost of it, any extraneous variables that may arise, um, any ethical problems, um, that may be an issue as well. The three different types of interviews, structured, semi-structured and unstructured. Difference between event and time sampling. Event sampling is when we record every time a behaviour happens, whereas time sampling is when you look at behaviour um, at different intervals so it might be 30 seconds or it might be a minute or it might be an hour and then the difference between content and thematic analysis this should be very fresh in your brains from last lesson content an analysis is taking qualitative or quantitative data and analyzing it in a way that can be quantified Whereas thematic analysis is similar, however, it's just qualitative data and it looks for themes or behavioural categories that comes from a certain type of data. Okay, so case studies. I want you to try and think of the key features of a study. What makes something a case study? So we looked at all of these famous case studies last time um, and others as well. So we looked at the case of HM, which is the picture on the left. And he was the guy who um, had epileptic fits, very severely epileptic seizures. So what they did, they did an experimental procedure where they removed um, part of the brain, part of that was hip the hippocampus. And it meant that he was no longer able to um, retain memories. So we're going to look at Henry Millaton in a lot more detail when we do memory but it was a very influential case study that taught researchers and taught psychologists that different areas of the brain are responsible for different things and then we have Phineas Gage on the right and he was the one that was involved in a terrible accident and a rod went through his head um, he um, experienced a lot of personality changes however he was still fully functional um, he still survived and that um, was a breakthrough in science because it it taught us that if we um, if people have tumors in the brain then certain areas of the brain can be removed um, while still and humans can still function and then we have this um, Sorry, I'm just looking at the picture and it's just a very ominous picture. That is Freud and little hands and Freud used little hands to develop his psycho, um, psychotherapy theory and he used Hans to explain the Oedipus complex. So what are the key features of a case study when you consider all of these? So a case study is a detailed study of an individual, institution or an event and an example is an example of evidence-based research because psychologists turn to individual cases and it's usually something that's a little bit unusual and they look at that in great detail 
um, to try and explain behaviour. Scientific method and thus aims to use objective and systematic methods. So sometimes we're, um, we're tempted to say that case studies are subjective and sometimes they are, like Freud's um, Freud's case study was very subjective but sometimes it can be scientific and objective they also gain information from a variety of sources so um, the persons themselves family and friends and obviously that's um, either primary or secondary data but what other methods can be used to gather data and we did look at this when we talked about case study for the first time so pause me now and try and think about that so all of these methods and more are used. Interviews, questionnaires, experiments, case histories, secondary data. These are all looked at. And a strength of a case study is the term, um, I wonder if you'll remember it, sad I can't ask you, um, is the term called triangulation. And it's where researchers use a lot of qualitative techniques to um, establish the reliability and the validity of their research so if they get similar results from their interviews from the questionnaires from their experiments from the secondary data then it means that it's reliable because you've found consistent results using all of these different research methods however case studies aren't always about individuals sometimes researchers conduct case studies about events so i'm going to tell you about two events and I wanted to consider what makes them case studies and maybe think about what other events we could look at um, as a case study. So the first one is one that you're probably too young to remember, but it was the um, London riots. And researchers were interested at investigating mob behaviour with, within these London riots. Um, it presented an opportunity to re-examine some of the explanations for the apparently unruly behaviour of the mobs. And actually what researchers Riker and Scott, um, Stott found sorry, um, was that behaviour was not always unruly. Mobs don't just go crazy and riot at random. Um, they actually target particular shops and particular people. And what Furlong said is that these patterns of what they attack and who they attack or don't attack um, reveal something about the grievance, their grievances about the world. So it tells us about how they think and their experiences of the world. So why is this a case study? It's a case study because they used various methods, such as questionnaires and interviews and secondary data and case histories, to collect their data. And then they looked for consistencies, consistencies within these data to reach their conclusions. The second one is a bit of a weirder one. It's um, one about a mass suicide of a cult group. And basically there was this guy in the 50s called Jim Jones. And he was an American preacher from Indiana. And he created um, this temple, this religion, this cult, um, where he convinced uh, members of his congregation to give him all their money and the property. This led to him thinking he was a god and he wanted everybody else to see him as a god as well. If people refused, they were public, publicly humiliated or even attacked. So then the US government caught on to what he was doing and they started to question um, the conduct of the church. Jones moved to South America where he created um, Jonestown. Um, but then he became really paranoid and eventually ordered his 900 followers to commit suicide by drinking a combination of poison and Kool-Aid. The case study was used to reflect on social processes in groups and the effects of leaders. So it looked at both conformity, why were people conforming to um, this behaviour? Why were they conforming to giving him money and seeing him as a god? Why were they obeying this um, authority figure? So it was a very interesting case study that used lots of different methods in order to gain its data. Okay, so can you think of any strengths and weaknesses of case studies? I'm sure you can. I want you to try and come up with at least two strengths and two weaknesses. So strengths um, that you might have put down 
is that um, it is rich in an in-depth data um, that is collected. So it means that it's more valid. Validity means that it's measuring what it intended to measure. So, for example, if we look at Freud, what he wanted to measure was the psychosexual stages and how children go through those. So the fact that he created such an in-depth longitudinal study on the little boy meant that it collected um, valid data because it was measuring what he intended to do. It provides us insights into the complex interaction of many factors. It's the opposite um, to experiments in which variables are held constant. So experiments only look at one thing, whereas case studies look at lots of things and they look at how those things interact with each other. It investigates instances of human behaviour that are rare, which would sometimes be unethical to manipulate such conditions experimentally. For example, HM. Um, we couldn't have, just for the sake of research, removed someone's hippocampus and found out what, what would happen. So they're very useful in, in cases where experimental manipulation isn't possible. However, with case studies, it's very difficult to generalise because each case is very unique. Um, not to mention you can't generalise to all genders. Um, with, um, with any case study, it's, it's hard to generalise to other cultures and other people because the behaviour does tend to be rare and it's not behaviour that we tend to experience. There are also important ethical issues to consider. Um, such as confidentiality and informed consent. So again, with the example of HM, even though he was kept um, anonymous, because of his rare condition, it's very difficult to, because people knew about his condition, so they knew when people said HM who they were talking about. Um, another example of that is Clive Waring. He was kept, um, he was kept anonymous for a little while, uh, but then eventually people find out. It can also cause psychological harm um, due to being tested on for many years. So HM was continually tested on his memory till till he died. They um, researchers consti- consistently visited him um, and made him do little experiments um, to test his memory. So those are the weaknesses, and that is it for today's lesson. So please send in your notes so I can see how you're doing. And if you have any questions, please post on Teams or email me and I will see you soon.